like a hard carry of a team in this uh, playoff format. It's just so tough to win opponents' map picks and stuff right a lot of the time. Edge gas and pool all coming up, racks on the way in as we get this up and ready. Might see a next season with Basilis. You think? Honestly, if this league gets Basilis, it's only gonna get better. And better and better and better. Oliveira Sola, like I say, 2-0. Closes out the match on one to the best of one ace. We're coming up to the top side of the map. Getting some damage done, Reaper taking some shots, couple CCs still on the way up, so we are going to play triple command center here from Oliveira. These two obviously played earlier. And uh, Oliveira. And the better of Sol in that game that Sol initially played the Roaches and the all-in with. Really just dropped his way to victory in that one. The second game just was looking like he was holding on on Grezvan, but he was not able to keep holding long enough. And so Sola got the W there in the end. Rip V-Dub, thank you so much for the seven-month resub on the Prime. Terran Forever, always appreciate it. Hell yeah, thank you so much. Queens push our Reaper away. A couple of Hellions, our Star Portal coming through, and just going to be seeing the Reaper. Really want to just try and poke in for as much as possible. If you can get the Creep Team, obviously that would be amazing, but it's very unlikely. Rax lifts off the tech lab stop, but we'll look to relocate onto it. And it's going to be seeing our Hellion still coming out, our Link Suite still coming through the Queens as well. Four more, six more drones actually, on the way up from Solar. And he's just going to become a droning machine, which is the right thing to do. He's playing against three CCs, he wants to just be a macro beast for a little while. Oliveira is opting for that initial Banshee. Again, that Banshee on the way. And with the Banshee, obviously the opportunity to go cloak, maybe harass. But the way that Sola played earlier, he played Roach openings twice in a row. I wouldn't be blaming Oliveira to just sort of say, Hey, look, I'm just going to build a Banshee here because it's just going to help me defend nine times out of ten as well. The Marines is going to go nibble through the Overlord. I'll take that down. So we'll try to scout through. Marines able to get the kill on it. Marines fighting. A little grenade goes off. The Queen's going to get bopped back and around here. Aliens go up the left side again. Just going to have an attempt to move in from Oliveira. Can he do anything? Not really. The Queens are well positioned. So Sola, so far so good. And Oliveira just going to move into Stim. Obviously, Sola not showing any sign of moving straight into roaches or anything this game. Feelings just checking across the map, seeing what's there. It's just a few marines. It's just keeping an eye on things and, again, keeping info where he can. Stim back, building up on this barracks and a couple more racks. And coming up as well, so all of that's still coming through. Banshee's cranking their way through a few zerglings there as well as this small crawler. It's going to come relocate over towards the mineral line, and Hellions and a Reaper will begin to make their way up to the top. What are these Banshees going to do then in the end? Let's see if they can find a few workers. Solar. Very late pain there, some lab. It's going to work out in this scenario. 
The only thing that's really going to be unfortunate is not having a lair to chase down Cloakshees, but obviously, Spore Crawlers in good positions can do just fine in that regard as a single link finds this, and his Banshees just back away, so not going to do anything with themselves just yet. Backing it up, and Sola just fully powering into Ling Bane, and whatever the lair tech unit will be, potentially Hydras could go meters. More feel in Hydras if it's Sola. He's firing, but he's taking some shots. Of a push through the single ling again, picking up some good info here. We'll see. Okay, you got some Hellions and Banshees defending. The first Marines are moving out. So Solo gonna be able to prep for this. We'll have the 1 1 melee upgrades to help him trade with these initial Marines in the next few moments as he's just getting ready to take this forward hatchery. The Ling Bane's already positioned here. And all Oliver wants to do is try to slow down the creep spread because this is a position he'll attack into later. So the more the creep spread slows down here, the easier it is for him to traverse the map the easier it is for him to set up into some very good positions further down the line. He's kind of the top. Group team is going down and just going to be seeing more of these Zerglings running over. Obviously not able to deny the creep going down, but not letting too much else happen either. We are going to go straight infestation. You've hit Hydra Den here. Oh, Oliveira missing the 2-2 upgrades because of the armory being delayed. A little bit of a mistake there and with the speed of Solar's upgrades. I just got a little bit worried because obviously Solar's upgrades are very quick so far. Hmm. You could just give Solo some nice timings, of course. Lane's coming through. The Queen's taking some damage at Banelands. See what they can do. The Link counterattack looks good. Straight into that mineral line. And there's no defense there just yet. We'll start seeing those worker counts. Dropping here as the SCVs pull the side. Eight workers going down already. Can Solo defend this position at the same time is a big part of the question. Marines finally show up to defend on the picture in pictures. So those links get pushed away after 10 SCV kills. They could now be used as a surround as well. So it's a beautiful one to move. You hit the run by and now you're set up to potentially surround or even just blocking reinforcements easily coming across the map. Looks like Solo didn't use those links at all just yet though. And now they ran into Marines that stimmed up into them. So maybe not as great for Solo as it initially seemed. And Oliveira is up. 50 army supply right now. Looking pretty darn good. Sola just did not trade well at all on this top side. I thought he was doing okay. I thought he was kind of pushing it back, but especially these last few lings on the counter attack going down, that combined with this defense just hasn't been good enough. And this is Oliveira's timing, man. Obviously, the moment 2 2 kicks in for Sola, he's so much stronger. But now Oliveira's put himself so far ahead, the upgrades might not be able to make enough of a difference. Another scan, some more creep tumors going down. The Ling Bane will come running through. It's going to be seen that tanks firing up, but Sola just doesn't have the numbers. Is that all of his Bane lanes? GG. Oliveira is one map away from punching Kaizy Gaming into the top three of the World Team League playoffs. Kaizy Gaming are on a redemption arc right now, I tell you that much. Jesus. If they go all the way, man, honestly. Bottom left hand side from Kaizy Gaming. He's gone the run of a lifetime. Once again, it's Oliveira. Top right, our red Zerg player from Kaze, uh, from Onside Gaming, Solar. And it would be an upset for Onside, who are in the first season in the league, to not make the final day of playoffs in the first place. Like I say, one of the big reasons they didn't make it to the final day of playoffs from the group stage is because they played Rex a lot of the time as their third player. So they lost a lot more maps and they just ended up going to the ace match a lot more than anybody else, even though they won in that ace match a lot of the time. And now this team upgraded with the power of Ryong Nee playing today. In my eyes, one of the strongest league uh, teams in the league right now in absolute trouble and very possibly going out. Hatchgasm pool coming up, racks on the way. Obviously, big map takes a long time to scout here. We're not going to see Oliveira trying to do anything fancy just yet. He did see a little bit of uh, 
mech earlier on. Maybe that's something Oliver could bring out again. A little bit of mech play. He's, he's done both on this map basically so far today. So there's not really any guarantee or anything just yet. Again, if you're cheering for some Mario vs. Reno action, guys, you want Solo to win this map right now. That's where we currently stand as we are. Let's see the Reaper coming down the low ground. Grenade goes down. A couple of links get bopped. That's going to be seeing this Queen finishing up on the natural and he's going to get a few shots off on a Reaper. So Reaper getting pushed away out into the center. Let's going to see our Stim Pack is on the way. Uh, Stim Pack. I will Zerg version of Stim Pack. Ling speed. They make the Lings run faster. So OP though, they don't have to use, you know, they don't lose 10, you know, 10 HP to do so, and believe it or not, they don't have, it's a permanent upgrade as well, so sick. The Zerg Stim Pack, aka Link Speed, is on the way, and that's just going to be Solo, again, really establishing very normally here. 3cc from Oliveira is pretty much an expectation as well. And they're just going to pop a queen over the side. Really intrigued as to what the switch up will be here from Solar. You know, is he going to play them 1-1 one, one roaches again? Is that part of his plan? Or what, what does he want to try and get done in this? Jones coming across as this third is going to get protected by a couple of queens. Banshee is going to have the cloak on it, so we're going to have those Banshees again here from Oliveira. Makes sense when Solo played Roaches so heavily in the earlier series. Get those Banshees up, play that safe. And just set up from there as our Overlord trying to just pick its way into the main base. That's the left first this time from Solo, by the way. So last game was very quick on the Evo Chambers and the 1-1 melee. This time we're going to get that last start instead. So it's going to be more so focused on the tech. There's likely faster bailing speed in this game. I'll, you know, rewind to that glass game a little bit and just say, you know, part of the reason Solo probably had issues, he was being so freaking greedy, right? You know, he was on his way to the infestation pit, Hydroden, looking for a hive when that big attack of Oliveira came. He was building 2-2 upgrades that weren't yet finished. These, all these things combined with the units that he lost probably just resulted in him just not having enough to hang on in there. And he was trying to be greedy from the start because of the speed at which he went into the melee upgrades. And it wasn't even that that he then got punished for later on. It was just a bit too much greed heading into the next stage of the game again. I was just going to have our queens get one Hellions. Oliveira a step too far. As our Ling is about to finish up, our Balin Nest is about to complete. These aliens come through, they get rid of a couple of drones. Banshees are going to come across here and they're going to find one drone, I believe I was about to build a fourth. And now they'll try and find some damage in the mineral lines, but with the Overseer up quickly, thanks to the quick lair, we are going to be able to deal with these uh, Banshees pretty easily. The Queens get some decent damage on them, not loads, so the Banshees probably can come back in without having to go home to repair. I'm just going to see the rest of our Banshees moving around the other way. 1-1 one, one upgrades on the way from Oliveira. So he will have that 1-1 one, one upgrade timing window in his favor. You see Carapace just now starting from Solar. Obviously no attacking upgrade for him just yet.
Bunch of extra balance coming through. Some extra zerglings too. Hellions go around the left side. Just going to take the watchtower. And here's our first push with a stim involved. Banji still just on the right side again. This map is massive, guys. Playing bio here does feel terrifying because it feels like the Zerg can just be so controlling of the entire map. So many open spaces as well. It feels like you're just walking into potentially Zerg surrounds the entire time. As Oliveira distracts on the right side, the Hellions are diving to the top left. And well, Sola didn't leave anything really over here. A few Lings pop out. Oliveira only finds two drones, though. So only two workers going down. That was obviously hoping to be a little bit more, but he doesn't lose the Hellions at least. It's not like he dove them in trying to kill a whole bunch of stuff and then all the Hellions died. That's obviously not the case. I mean, slowed up again and just going to keep their medivacs active. Of course, I mean, this is completely different to the altitude game we saw between these two earlier. Early on, when we were talking about altitude, we were talking about the massive drop play from Oliveira that puts Sol into some very weird positions, some very difficult positions. This time, Sola is not playing Roaches, so dealing with the drops is immediately going to be something you can deal with more easily. You can move around a lot better. His Ling Bane is going to be a lot faster at responding to threats. Banshees show up, trying to deny a top left fifth base. Even just some damage on that could make it more vulnerable, more easily picked off later as Oliveira comes pushing up the map. He's got fourth base behind this. He's not super committed to this attack, kind of like ending the game or anything. As the Banshees drop down to only one remaining, we cancel rebuild. The Banshees will die. The by our right side base though goes down, so the fourth base dies. We just had to cancel and rebuild the top left. So suddenly Solo is without a fourth base, and Oliveira puts himself in a fantastic spot, resetting Solo's economy to four ba uh, a three base situation when he was about on the verge to go to five bases. Great one-two play from Oliveira, hitting the left, hitting the right. Yeah, it was a great call as well, because at first I was like, oh, is it, is it really worth leaving these Banshees that to maybe get a cancel? Well, A, they got a cancel, and yeah, they both die, but that combines with the kill on the right side to be even more effective. Because if that base was up right now in the top right, and you just have the mining back, then Oliveira probably doesn't gain as much. But yeah, really does uh, slow down Solo's economy, and Oliveira's closing in on being maxed out. Gonna have to be careful about how he picks the fights in this map. Like I've been talking about, it's big, it's sizable, but I'll see what he can do. Hydra Den is working from Solo, getting his Hive online as well. Oliveira will be hitting 2-2 shortly. And that will be a slight lead against Solo, so you'll have a little bit of a time window where he's 2-2 against 1-1. We'll see if that is going to be impactful in the end. Kikai Kikai, thank you so much for the 44-month resub as well, as we have our Marines. It's going to go unloading into the main base. They're going to start dealing some damage. We're going to get this on picture-in-picture. Picture. No, we're just going to watch it full screen as the Lings... Obviously taking a little while to get here and to deal with it, but obviously still way faster than Roaches. Again, we're using this as an opportunity to set up the other army. The first tank shots go off. What can we do? These Banes all running in from one direction. I, I hate this from Solar, I think. These Banes aren't going to get close to the Marines, although a lot of the tanks do go down. We try and kill that final siege tank. We don't get it. Solar Supply absolutely plummets. Onside Gaming's life is on the line, and Solar might not be able to keep them alive anymore. Oliver has got this base kill. Once again, a fourth disallowed. Solo's going to lose Queens as they dip forward as well. One kill, two kills. Hydra goes down trying to defend this as well. And Oliveira controlling the upper left side of the map. His drop in the main again. A distraction to get him set up elsewhere. And while he lost a lot of those initial tanks, it was just so expensive for Solo to clear that out. It gave him the Marines left over at the end to continue that push. As Oliveira is looking for this 2-0 to send Kaizi to the final day. Four wins in a row it would be. Wow. Oliveira is just going to keep up the pressure. He knows Sol is a little bit on the run. The Vipers are on the way, but they won't have energy straight away either. As Sol is going to commit to this. The tanks will now get sieged. Oliveira is already split to the side. Move commands on the bottom though. Horrible fight from Oliveira. He loses so much on the bottom left hand side. The Marines just ran into Balins and the supply plummet. Sola was on the verge of being in a very bad situation and he turns it around. Oliveira's aggression is going to backfire in his face and suddenly this game is leveled up. Wow, I mean, that was just a, a bad fight, right? The tank siege kind of late, and at first I was like, well, maybe if they get siege and get some shots off, but the Marines just didn't do enough. The splitting was not there. They died so quickly. 
That really was the issue as our Lurker Den on the way through from Solar at the moment. So bringing that Lurker Den online gives him a chance to tech up and to force Oliveira to play a very different game here as well. I still like it for Oliveira. You look at the supplies. He's still a little bit ahead. He's actually got a bit of money in the bank. He got a fifth base up without being harassed. That's a fantastic addition to have. Looks like he's maybe going to save these Liberators for a bit further down the line, perhaps? Uh, obviously, there's no base here, so he didn't want to run them into the top just yet. So maybe just waiting to combo them with a, a push on the other side to really do something. Marines, tanks, medivacs moving through the bottom right corner. This Liberator Siege is up. The Spore Crawler is going to fire away at that Lib. Ghost Academy is going to be on its way. It's necessary, obviously, as the Lurkers start to come into play. First few Lurkers are coming out, but they're not going to have their upgrades yet. And this position's kind of cool, too. Sola never really wanted this base so soon in the game, but because the top left got denied so repeatedly, he is kind of on this base earlier than he wanted. So now you've got this kind of choke point into the Terran's position. And the Marines almost looked like they were just going to commit there to kill this base off. Are we going to go for it? Obviously, Oliveira really wants to. He wants to deny it, but Sola back to the four bases, really stopping from ever getting the economy up in this game. You abduct the tank forward. Tank target fire the hatchery. <laughs> Can you imagine Solo abducts the tank forward and then the tank just target fires the hatchery and gets a kill? That would be nutty. Worst abduct ever. We do dive in. We do kill off this hatchery. What a play is Oliveira will just not let Solo stabilize still. That previous fight was great for Solo. Don't get me wrong, but stabilizing is not quite on the menu yet. As that Zerglin comes through, chasing down his siege tank. I'm just going to be having... The tank here is actually going to go down, so not sure what happened there. Just a little bit of Miss Micro from Oliveira. I was minorly distracted. Ellie came running at me with a flamingo. And uh, just had to obviously, naturally, if a puppy runs at you with a flamingo, you kind of got to take a moment to say hello, right? Um, Medivac is going to go back across the left hand side. So they're going to fall away here. And man, Solo's really being saved by the fact that this is a massive map. If this was a smaller map, I think Oliveira's got this game in the bag already. The size of this map does work in the Zerg's favor. That's why Sola picked this map. It was his map pick. And he gets kind of a little bit of leeway because of it so far. As we're scanning around, Oliveira has no idea this army's down here. Should have built a sentry tower. And this base that Oliveira had up for such a long time is now going to fall. However, he's going to get a massive drop in the main base. And all the tech is here, but there's a Nidus in his main as well. And there's going to be action everywhere. Lurgaden and Hive will both go down. Already Sola's rebuilding. The lair to start resetting. Oliveira is dropping this main. There's no units even close, by the way. So he's going to get the spawning pool and everything. Now the Niners in the main base just go up. The infestation pit just went down as well, by the way. He's going to kill a lot of the lings as they just stream in. Target fire on the bailing. Yes, he gets it. So that's going to be good so far. Tanks need to siege up here. Oliveira is obviously busy trying to micro this army. He loses a lot of the supply. 19 SCVs have died as well because that bottom right base went down to initiate all of this, this whole sequence of events. Oliveira got a lot of the tech reset from Solar, but he didn't really get a lot of... He didn't really get a lot of the drones or anything. They pulled to the corner. He focused on taking down the structures instead. Now Solar's going to come pushing through the middle of the map. Ling Bane Hydra moving through. Going to go via this gold base. He's going to be seeing a couple of tank shots. Defensively speaking, this is going to be a somewhat unbreakable position, I think. I just don't think Sola has the tech in play to necessarily break the position. Of course, he can't rebuild Vipers or anything right now after the previous loss. One of my thinking about it based on the top left. I love the Sensor Tower addition here. Still getting some heads up about where these armies are going to be. So you can move your way around this map more easily and more comfortably without leaving yourself open to massive counterattacks. Another hatchery coming up. Just going to be having ourselves the map now really getting zergified, right? Creep spread all over it. Yeah, the map really is just getting zerged up all over the place here as the hive continues in. We've got ghost marines pushing forward. This Nidus network will go down. Well, the is probably just going to have to start playing a much slower game. Sit back, defend, slowly fight for bases. This can definitely turtle up into a 30-minute game or so, depending on how some of these trades for Solo go. He breaks in over here. 
Looking for the plantary. Yo! Oh, I thought he had enough repair to save the plantary. That would have been insane. Still loses a lot of units doing this, obviously. It has to rebuild a lot. The orbital's going to replace it straight away. It was so close to surviving. I guess the orbital replaces them straight away. Ain't so bad. Obviously, we'll probably rebuild a few SAVs. Seven already reproducing to get back on track on this location. A hive is moments from completing from Solar, so we can get that tech back online. Remember, that got reset way earlier on, it feels like. Now, it was only a few minutes ago, but yeah, it was uh, something that was a pretty big deal. A couple of ducks to bring these Liberators forward. Blinding pads on the tanks as well. The Banelines, unfortunately, are running into a bit of a death trap there, as the Siege Tank looks as though it's got the defense against the Nidus in the main. Didn't see any sign from Oliveira here to push these Hydras away on the bottom right as Solar. The game he won against Oliveira earlier today was this similar kind of choking kind of game where he eventually just choked him out of the game given a little bit of time Things and Hydras and Bantlin's gonna come down just gonna be seeing the Hellbats firing up a few Ling's already going down CC coming across Position's gonna get broken again. Oliveira's losing a bit of a uh, bit too much economy, perhaps even. I mean, he's losing a lot of SCVs in these fights. This is what Solo wants to do: keep that eco low, make it difficult for Oliveira to rebuild. I and mean, Oliveira doesn't really have a stacked-up army right now either, so it looks like this game might be slipping away from him, and Solo might just be on track to force this into that best of one ace, which is likely Mara versus Reno. That was kind of our expectation, at least. Very plausible as a scan comes down and the ghost gonna go spot in a little bit. Our lings will clean up a couple structures at the front. Onwards we go. There's blinding cloud drops on the siege tank here. And mm, how far does Solo want to go? If there was more blinding clouds on those tanks, then sure, but not convinced right now. And nuke in the top left while this fight was happening, but Solo's paying attention. So zoned in and is going to be able to deal with that. The awkward moment when a ghost drops an entire nuke and he just walks forward and kills more drones himself than the nuke manages. Solo's overtaking the bottom right and the upper left base as well, guys. It's looking more and more as though this game's getting out of control and Oliveira won't find a way back into it. It's just getting too difficult. If those bases begin to mine, there's no way that Oliveira has access to the resources necessary to really just keep him in this anymore. Another knight is attempting this main base, I assume, from that overseer. There it is, knight comes up, an immediate marauder stim. One marauder, as long as you're paying attention, it can just stim and deal with that very easily. Playing inside his bailing is all just going to come pressing through here, just going to go for this planetary fortress. I mean, Solo just changing the direction of attack a little bit and trying to force Oliveira's defense to be a little bit worse. Work is going down. It's going to be seen. Our work is now showing up here as well. Again, just an issue for Oliveira. Economy wise, has been in permanent trouble basically. In terms of trying to get his economy underway, hasn't been able to really do anything at all. Another attack from Solar. Bane's come crashing through this army. Pretty swarming right now, and Solar. Well, he just wants to try and keep some of these Hydras alive so he can just rebuild and go again. 66 new lings. A couple of Hydras, a few Infestors even being brought up at the moment as well, so...
pushing through Oliveira is going to go on a counter-attack, which it pretty much last ditched ever, right? you got to do something. Maybe as Sol is rebuilding, you can make some progress. You've been losing so much economy yourself. You've just not got the mining anymore. Sitting back isn't going to do it for you because you don't have the bases at this point, so it kind of makes sense. Oh, Chicky and Festa going forward. here, looking for a neural parasite, I'm sure. Trying to make life a little miserable. As we scan over the upper left hand side. Seven as he's going down, just gonna see a Hellion picking up a Ling or so, and just gonna be having Oliveira still 124 supply, not exactly pretty. Taking the position on this right side now, Sola. Do you have any Vipers left? Yes. Because Blinding Clouds are just gonna be very good at helping to initiate here. I mean, the tank pre split is very good. Sola just runs in, honestly. Just too many Lings and everything. Oliveira's gonna get overrun. And we are going to go to that best of one ace match that we've been getting excited about. Sola has one more rebuild to go, and this time probably will just close it out from there. As Oliveira scans his few ghost sniping away. Well, Onside and Kaizi are delivering, just going to go the absolute distance. GG says Oliveira, Sola with the fist bump. 23 minutes, he was in trouble early in this game. Saved by the fact it's his map pick, and it's a large map because of it. And now we have one map ahead of us, guys. Most likely, Raynor versus Maru to determine who wins this best of whatever best of this is. Who wins this World Team League playoff match, and who gets to the final day, the top three. I think whoever wins this has got to be a bit of a favorite against the Psystorm Gaming